In this video, we're gonna be jumping into the new Ask Zia feature inside of Zoho CRM. This has been improved to really function like a proper large language model. And it's gonna allow you to get additional insights, pulling report and data, get some help in CRM training, as well as actually take actions like the creation of custom modules and workflows all just via chat prompts. So we're gonna jump into that in just a moment here. Before I do, I wanna ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave any questions, video requests, and feedback down in that comment section and head on over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help with your Zoho installation. So jumping on in here, I'm inside of my demo CRM account. One thing I will highlight is you do need to be on the new UI for this to show up. This is the CRM for everyone UI. So if you haven't moved over, it's time to start thinking about it. We've got some videos on the channel. We'll link them down below that highlight some of the differences and, and how to interact with the CRM through this new user interface. Once you've moved over, you'll have your Ask Zia tool here. Again, this breaks down in help, action, and insights. We're going to go left to right here, and we're going to start with help. So let's say that we're a new user into the CRM, and we have a question. What's the difference between a lead and a contact? Really common question. We get this all the time, and it is different for different businesses. But in the broad strokes, what we would expect is that it would say, hey, a lead is someone who you might not have talked to yet. You haven't qualified their interest. You haven't really moved them into the formal pipeline. Whereas a contact is going to be someone who you've interacted with, maybe you've done business with in the past, maybe they're a third party kind of contact or partner. Those are the breakdowns that I would expect it to say. So what it's saying here, a lead is raw information collected from people who may be interested. They're collected via trade shows, marketing campaigns, etc. These are potential customers, but their interest is not confirmed. So that's pretty close to what I said. Obviously, word choice is always going to be a little bit different, but I would say, hey, I got that right. A contact, on the other hand, are people in the org who you've had communication with, you've really interacted with them. They're leads that have moved through the process, have been converted to potential customers, signifies there's a higher probability in turning them into a customer compared to a lead. So there it is. I'm sure for those of you out there who are a CRM admin, maybe for your organization, you've probably got this question a lot of times. So one less thing that you might have to answer here using an AI tool. I'm going to start a new chat now, and I'm going to ask it a little something more practical. How do I send an email to a lead? Again, so question number one being kind of conceptual, like, hey, what's the difference? What does it mean? Help me understand. Now this is one where it's like, hey, I didn't get trained. I need to send an email out to a lead. I don't know what buttons to press to do so. So let's see if it gives us a good set of examples and instructions. So here it is, question answered. So I do see this little block, provided context does not provide specific steps. This is something where as we get deeper into these, we're gonna be able to build our own context layer that's gonna teach the bot a lot more. But for right now, to send email to a lead, you're gonna open the lead record, look for a send email or email button. Yep, it's called send email which in the toolbar or actions menu, compose it and send it directly out. And then it points us to some additional documentation. So I would grade this answer more as like a B minus. Like, yes, this is true. It didn't mention related lists. It didn't mention using templates, right? So again, over time, we're going to get more hands-on with the ability to customize and alter the reactions and interactions from these bots. But for now, again, I would say this one gets probably like a B plus. This one gets more of like a C plus, B minus. It's true, but maybe isn't the most useful set of instructions. So now that we've played around with the help section, let's jump into actions. So actions break into creating a summary of notes, creating a workflow, and creating a report. I'm going to jump into workflows here at as our example. Now I've dropped in a prompt when a lead is created with the lead source online store, create a task and assign it to the lead owner. The task name should be new lead follow-up. One thing I'll highlight as you're writing these prompts, I like to start them with when a blank is blank, right? When a quote status is updated to confirmed, when a lead is created, start with the trigger. This helps the prompt builder a lot in terms of figuring out the right thing to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this through. Let's see what happens. So it's identified the module. It's gonna trigger in leads, triggering on lead creation. So far, so good. Conditions have been identified. So leads with the lead source online store. Again, looking good so far. Actions are identifying a task. 
So we're going to create a task, assign the lead owner with this name. So what it's given me back in text form looks good. Let's go ahead and actually open the workflow and see what happens over there. So when a lead is created, if the lead source is online store, do this new lead follow up. You may notice right off the bat, that's not quite right. Um, what we want is that with a space. So I'll fix that real quick. And um, we'll change our criteria. Now let's look at our new lead. Okay, looks good. Status is not started. Task owner is the only user inside of this account, but also the owner of that lead. It chose to do the notify assignee, which is fine. Um, so overall did pretty well. The one thing I'll notice it didn't get quite right is just the online store had a space in it in my request, but it didn't in its output. So you're always going to want to take a look at these, right? You don't want to just trust it implicitly. You want to make sure that you're really querying it, checking the outputs, making sure that things look good. Maybe want to also create a report. So let's say, hey, create a report in the deals module that shows deal amounts by stage. So let's go ahead and see what it does. So this is a pretty common report. I want to group things up by stage. I want to make sure I'm seeing the amount, right? So that I can get kind of a snapshot and a drill in into what's going on in my deal pipeline. So it's thinking about this right now, generating a response. Uh, all right, here it is. That's looking a little funky. Oh, we're actually watching it go. I haven't used this so far. So we're going to be right back with you in just a moment once this thing is all done creating this report. So report created successfully. Let's go ahead and open this up and see how it looks. So in here, we've got our deal name, the account, the amount, closing dates, all looks okay. I am seeing it added a sum, which is kind of nice, but it didn't actually group it by the stage. Really what we would kind of think about here is having some type of row grouping where we would have a stage like this. This is kind of the output that I was expecting there. So in this case, it did okay. Um, I don't really like that amounts in here twice. It didn't do my summation or really include the stage in general. So we would probably want to come back and redefine this prompt a little bit more in detail and try to get it more granular to see if we can get a better response. But for now, I'm going to jump over into Insights. So insights is the last section here. What I would recommend with this one is use this for quick stuff. So say like deals in close lost. Right, because this one I have noticed it struggles a bit to really understand what you're trying to do. So you want to keep this pretty simple. A lot of the times you're still going to be wanting to create reports and dashboards that are going to show these things. But you can use it for some of these quick answers, quick questions, deals closing next week, right? Things like that that are going to be easier to just quickly pull an insight from and get them into your visibility without having to go and make a report, right? You can just prompt this thing. So what deals are supposed to close this month, right? So again, just asking it these high level questions in plain old English and seeing the response that it give us, which should match back to that particular input that we gave it. So this thing's generating its response right now, interested to see what it gives us. So here it's given us a list of deal names. Again, like I would kind of want more info here. So We'll say, please show the stage and closing date along with the name. And let's see, we'll be right back once this thing is done. All right, so that's looking better. Um, now it's showing me the stage and the closing date along with the name of deals that are supposed to close this month. So really, learning lesson here on this Insight one is be specific. <laughs> if you'd like to see certain fields, make sure to specify those. This is, again, one of those elements or once we have Zia agents and we can go in and customize the context and the instructions and the behavior, you're going to be able to kind of give it more assumptions. Say something like, hey, when I ask about deals, always include the stage and the closing date, right? Because those are two just like pinnacle fields that are relevant for any particular deal record. So with that, I think we're all good here for today. We've gone through, we've played around with help, actions, and insights. I would say overall, it feels a little bit early. I'm excited with what this is trying to do. I will tell you, like some of this stuff that got it out, there's a bit of a, a fight to get this thing to do correctly. I had to use a, a bit of trial and error to really make sure that it would actually create the proper workflow. So you're definitely going to want to check the output of this, but... 
even in a case like this, where it's creating me a workflow and all I need to do is go in and fix the lead source that it's specified, it still saves me some time, especially if you're not familiar in the back end of Zoho CRM. So with that, I think we're ready to wrap up here for today. If you have any questions, video requests, or feedback, leave those down in the comment section below. I'd love to see what everyone thinks of this once you get your hands on it. So definitely let us know about that. If you found this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, my name is Tyler Colt, and I will see you next time.